Hey VC, it's me reporting about my playlist. So uh, today in the morning, I kind of woke up with the with the desire to listen to a particular sound, a sound that was significant. Um, well, obviously in London, in the UK, at the beginning of the of the eighties. So there was this thing, there was this vibe, uh, this kind of a sophisticated, very jazzy music, uh, very high level produced, and yet very poppy, very accessible. Um, so this is what I was going after. Now, of course, the one of the most prominent examples of this is the first album by Mats Bianco. I've already shown it in another video, so I don't even gonna dwell too much on it but they were obviously one of the first that followed uh, this kind of sound um, I mean their their single half a minute was a big success and has remained a well-known tune up until now um, another famous act a year later the first album Diamond Life by Shade. Now, uh, this band really know how to play. Um, this came out as a nice gatefold sleeve. Yeah, it's actually... I mean, it was only a four-piece band, a singer and two and three musicians. Um, oh, but most of the time they sounded like, like eight people. Um, even though... It's not it's not a it's not a heavily overdubbed music. I mean you just listen to it and you hear exactly what everyone is playing. But um great musicians. And same goes for their following album Promise. Another great example. Now I kind of like to listen to those albums because um in many sense they are they're imprinted on our memories as uh, as single bands, as bands that became prominent and successful with single songs. And so sometimes it's interesting just to play the whole record and to figure out if it can hold any water. And uh, in this case, it is absolutely true. Uh, I think Sade is a pretty good choice if you have visitors and want to play some music that's the kind of album that you play through and that works fantastically it's never annoying um, and it's it's a wonderful savvy sophisticated pop music with this strong jazzy and latin feel and vibe really cool but of course the next album uh, represents certainly the grandmaster of this style of course I'm talking about Night and Day by Joe Jackson This is certainly one of my, let's say, three favorite Joe Jackson albums. It's not easy to choose because he did some incredibly great music. Um, but this one has all the right songs, I would say. You have Stepping Out on this album, Breaking Us in Two, the fantastic song Real Man, Slow Song. So yeah, I mean, if you don't have this album, you should. Also a gatewalt sleeve with a great picture. Maybe I can position it in the middle. Ah yeah. Damn it. So um this came out 1982, so it was even a year before the Matt Bianco album and two years before the first Sade album. So I think this was a, really a game changer. Now uh, Joe Jackson emphasizes here that uh, written and recorded in New York City and obviously there is a slight uh, conceptual touch here. It is obviously an album about New York. Now the next album fits kind of interestingly into this train of thought especially because it has exactly the same title as the Joe Jackson album, Night and Day. And uh, I would 
say that this artist has influenced everyone I've been talking about right now. Um, and I found this album on this uh, vinyl fair two weeks ago that I told you about. Um, I'm talking about Night and Day by Sergio Mendes and Brussels 77, which is a brilliant uh, album. I'm showing you the flip side, but this is how the front side looks like. Brilliant music and just just a joy to listen to this. You put it on a turntable and it works from the very first second. This is a uh, collection of tracks which are all a collection of tunes and songs which came from all kind of directions. Um, so you have music by Brazilian artists here, I mean like Gilberto Gil, Chobim, uh, Sergio Mendes himself, but you have also American jazz tunes there, Cole Porter, obviously. But they are all put in this uh, beautiful Sergio Mendes mix, which is uh, music that exists kind of precisely on the verge between jazz and bossa nova. Fantastic, brilliant album. Yeah, so uh, that kind of was my jazzy morning. <laughs> So now I have one more album to show you, which is something completely different, but completely different. <laughs> and uh, I'm talking about Before and After Science by Mr. Brian Eno. Now this album has probably been shown on uh, vinyl community videos quite a lot. It's a true classic uh, album. I must say that at first I have neglected this album for quite a while, simply because, um, well, when I have found Eno, <laughs> which kind of sounds like when I have found God, so when I have found Eno, um, this of course coincided with my, and that's many many years ago, this coincided with my discovery of ambient music, so for many years my general expectation of Eno was ambient make ambient records and I kind of didn't want to uh, I was not so much interested in his other musical enterprises and explorations which is a shame but thank you know you kind of grow out of it and uh, uh, you start to listen to his other work as well now this here first of all it's it's the interesting part about this album is that this represents a certain time in his creative life that uh, shows us this uh, journeyman Eno. So this is a very mixed bag. So almost every track is recorded with different people. You can very well imagine how he is traveling through the world from New York to London uh, and uh, to Berlin and just recording with, with, with tapes in his back and adding tracks and uh, working and tinkering with individual tracks until they are finished. Is a track ever really finished? It's a good artistic question, isn't it? So um, I kind of like that because it's like a landscape of interesting musical ideas. Um, nevertheless, it's rather it's it's, it's quite a coherent album. Um, but uh, if I have if I would have to pin it somehow down stylistically, it's uh, it's certainly a, a no-wave album, mostly. I mean, because uh, if you like material or talking heads, this is the direction. Um, and a lot of these people are on the album. I mean, you have like Fred Frith here from Material. Um, there's Robert Fripp on this album, of course. Phil Manzanera. Uh, there is one track which kind of comes from this whole cluster session, so this is only recorded with Achim Rodilius and, and Möbi Möbius. It's a lot of Phil Collins actually playing on it. So um, it's a very good album, but it was kind of a late discovery for me. There is also a little anecdote I would like to add to this. So if you look at the flip side of the album, you can see these four pictures here. And those are sketches of, uh, of four watercolor pictures. Those pictures are made by a German artist, Peter Schmidt, and uh, as you can read here, 
um, four prints of these uh, pictures have been added to the first edition of the album. So um, in other editions you can only see these black and white uh, sketches. Um, but in the first editions there were, there were these four big pictures in it. This is obviously, this, uh, when I bought this album, this obviously was not a first edition and even if it would have been the first edition, there were no pictures in it, of course. Um, so uh, I thought, like, that's a, that's a shame. I mean, you pay good money for a record like that and then you get it without pictures. Well, then I thought, are we not living in the age of the internet with limitless possibilities? <laughs> so... <laughs> What I did is I just found digital scans of these pictures. I sent them to a photo lab and I just ordered four prints of these pictures. So here they are. So I kind of cheated and uh, I feel really good about it. Oh, this one is the other way around. I even did one more thing. I made a print of this photo showing Brian Eno and Peter Schmidt sitting at a table with these four watercolor pictures hanging on the wall. And I added it to the album. So I think I've pretty much upgraded my version of Before and After Science. So that's it for now. And I keep you posted about my new musical endeavors. Till next time.